Making enemies with video game characters and planning to end their lives is a thrill that only gaming can achieve. I mean, if you hate a character in a TV series, you just have to wait and hope and pray and keep everything crossed that they eventually bite the dust. But with a controller and a can-do attitude, you can take justice into your own hands in the following games. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 RPG characters we couldn't wait to kill. Number 10, Caligura. Fear and Hunger 2 Termina The sheer amount of vile characters and awful deeds performed in both Fear and Hunger titles kind of makes Dark Souls look like Super Mario Bros. And that's what makes it so impressive, well, depending on your perspective, that one character stands above the rest as the most hateable. Caligura appears in the second game, Fear and Hunger 2 Termina. He's a member of the large ensemble forced to partake in the Festival of Termina, a battle royale death tournament. Most characters are reluctant, as you may imagine, to start the killing, but this vile villain has no such concerns whatsoever. He's nicknamed Count A-Hole by the other contestants, which sums him up perfectly. This guy has a foul mouth, hates everyone, generally behaves like a creepy psychopath, and commits some disgusting acts on the other contestants. Now, one of the game's biggest challenges is that you don't actually really want to kill anyone, but damn, this scumbag doesn't give you the same grief. In fact, if you take too long to kill him in the game, he'll actually become Moonscorched, which turns him into a monster reflective of his personality. It should come as no surprise then that his Moonscorched form is a literal ball sack. Oh, how poetic. Number 9. The Mercenaries Disco Elysium Disco Elysium is not a game about killing. Across its sprawling 40 hours, there's only one sequence really where your character, an amnesiac detective attempting to solve a local murder, is forced to square up against people trying to kill him. The situation has been building all game, with the different players in the murder all converging in the town square. At the heart of it are a group of three rogue mercenaries, attempting to perform a violent retribution for the death of one of their own. While you might think that seems justified on paper, the action is anything but. Not only is the group taking the law into their own hands, but they don't even have the right people in their sights. In fact, they either won't believe or care about at all if you try to explain it to them. Even worse, it's made clear throughout the game that this mercenary group are bad people through and through, doing anything as long as the price can be met. Even worse than that, though, is that this scenario can lead to the death of your partner and a pure, innocent baby boy, Kim Kitsuragi, easily the most lovable and memorable character in the game. With his life on the line, these guys deserve death just for thinking about putting him in their sights. Number 8. Or in the Red, Baldur's Gate 3 there's a bit of a love-hate relationship with Orin the Red in Baldur's Gate 3. The demonic trickster is one of those buddies that's just so memorable you almost don't want to see them leave the story. But that is also a testament to how evil she has to be to eventually tip the scales. What makes her villainy so personal though is the way that she taunts the player throughout the game. After her introduction, she'll start to take the form of seemingly innocuous NPCs throughout the world, some even tied to quests. Ultimately, this usually results in her killing the NPC and then revealing that she's been manipulating you in this form the whole time. And no matter how many times she does it, it never gets less painful. More than that though, she's also responsible for kidnapping one of your party members, literally removing a tool from your arsenal until you're able to track them down and free them. Very uncool behavior, if you ask me. Eventually, you do get the chance to kill her, but after all of this unsanctioned buffoonery, you probably will still be looking sideways at any suspicious NPC for the rest of the game. You know, just in case. Number 7. Lucian Fairfax Fable 2 Here's a question for you. If somebody killed your sister, then tried to kill you, then years later killed your dog and tried to kill you again, you'd probably want to put their head into a toaster, right? If you don't think so, then grab a copy of Fable 2, play it through, and see if you can forgive the dastardly Lucian Fairfax for all that he did. The obsessive villain and main antagonist of the second Fable game was far from his namesake. Hell, his introduction saw him shoot your sister and then you, and it's fair to say that child murder 
does it make a wonderful first impression. Ultimately, throughout the game, you do kind of see Precious little of Lucian, as he acts as a mostly unseen villain that you're constantly working towards killing. However, whenever he does turn up, he always kills someone you love, including your precious pooch, as mentioned. Naturally, all this elusiveness and murdering fills you with a deep-seated hatred towards the man. It does suck that his death is so anticlimactic, but hey, at least he gets punished. Number 6. Benny Fallout New Vegas When you open a video game with a character shooting you in the head, you're all but putting a massive bullseye on their face and begging you to kill them. Benny, voiced by the late great Matthew Perry, is a grade-A douchebag with a silver tongue who acts as the head of the chairman, one of New Vegas's three families. Besides the whole knocking a bullet into your head thing, Benny also drowns you with snarky comments and unbearable wit, constantly trying to smooth talk his way out of your justified revenge. Your whole drive in the game's initial stages is to get back to the Vegas Strip and get your revenge on this checksuit wearing clown. And thankfully, once you arrive, you do have plenty of options for killing him. You can bludgeon him, shoot him, or allow the Legion to crucify him, and hell, you can even seduce and smother him with the Black Widow perk. All great and satisfying options, no doubt. Absolutely no notes there. Number 5, Sephiroth, Final Fantasy VII. Oh yeah, hands up if you saw this one coming. The dreaded Sephiroth will forever go down in history as one of gaming's most hated characters. As such, the vast majority of Final Fantasy VII players, both original and remake, have spent hours upon hours dreaming of ending his life. The FF villain is a former soldier who turned into a mad sycophant, hell-bent on becoming a god and taking over the world. It's all pretty expected villainous motivation, but what really makes you thirst for his blood is the infamous murder he commits. And now, even though this is one of the best-known moments in gaming history, it technically hasn't happened yet in the remake trilogy, so retroactive spoilers, I guess? Now, as mentioned, Sephiroth killing Aerith is arguably the franchise's most well-known moment. Watching as he took the life of your beloved party member in the heart of the game was gut-wrenching, and as soon as it happened, it sent all players on the warpath. Of course, unlike many entries on this list, you have to battle through a grueling boss fight to kill this villain, but the feeling of satisfaction after you do is immeasurable. Number 4, Donald Udina, Mass Effect. Ah yes, the biggest foil to space-based adventure, bureaucracy. Now you'd think that Commander Shepard's biggest haters would be the Geth or the Reapers or maybe Kai Lang or even Saren, who all probably would have deserved a spot on this list. But really, the biggest anti-Shepardite of the lot seems to be the irritating as all hell Donald Udina. The human member of the Citadel Council is all but allergic to agreeing with Shepard and takes any opportunity to belittle and criticize them. Naturally, it doesn't take long for this to become grating, especially in the first game. Besides being a weaselly politician though, Udina is also a ruthless human supremacist. He ticks almost every box on the chart of unlikability, so it takes no time for you to want to put an end to him, but sadly, that's easier said than done. When it comes to actually killing him or getting him killed, it's not as simple as taking on a regular NPC, as you don't get that many chances. However, after his betrayal in Mass Effect 3, you're finally, finally given the option to land a shot straight into this jerk. And if there's any player who didn't choose this option, well, they're more forgiving than I. Number 3, the loathsome dung eater, Elden Ring. It is very likely that during your first run of Elden Ring, you giggled a little when hearing the name Loathsome Dung Eater right at the start. I mean, what kind of name is that? This must be some odd comic relief character, surely. But, oh no, this NPC is about as far from comedy as can be. This disturbed Tarnished is a disgusting monster who loves to kill, defile, and curse people, often all three at once. He murders innocents and then inflicts them with the seedbed curse, which prevents their souls from reaching the Erd Tree. As a result, his victims exist in eternal torment and will remain cursed even if reborn, passing their curse onto their descendants. He really is one of Elden Ring's vilest villains, which is saying a lot. Your interactions with him don't help either, as he's unbelievably blasé about his sickening actions and even threatens you with death and defilement during your first meeting, with only your possession of a seedbed curse piquing his interest. Ultimately, he's a diabolical beast you'll want to kill, 
as soon as you get the chance. Number 2. Cicero, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Oh boy, you'll start reaching for your daggers, battle axes, or most painful spells the minute this irritating jester starts talking to you. Skyrim may be home to many killers, monsters, and just all-around jerks, but the most unlikable of them all is this obsessive fool. Cicero is a member of the Assassin's Order known as the Dark Brotherhood and an utterly fanatic of the Night Mother. He's so overly devoted to her that it comes across as pure mania and everything from his voice, personality and actions make you want to test your killing skills out on him. Of course, as is the RPG way, there are good reasons to keep him alive when given the option to kill or spare him in the Dark Brotherhood questline, and he is technically one of the few fully devoted members of the Order and can be an interesting, if aggravating, follow-up. However, while there are benefits, you will be hard-pressed to find many Skyrim players who opt to keep this annoying and unfunny clown breathing when given the chance to silence him forever. Number 1. Parson Jr. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt It's safe to say that Geralt of Rivia meets some pretty sick individuals throughout the Witcher series, but few can hold a candle to Parson Jr. Cyprian Wiley, the real name of this scumbag, is one of Novigrad's most dangerous criminals and is known for brutally murdering and mutilating women for his sick pleasure. And seeing the bodies of his victims strewn about his home is enough to make your blood boil. He even threatens to do the exact same to Ciri, so those players with any hint of parental instincts will want to make him dead as a doornail as soon as they can. In a twisted irony though, Junior's punishment is arguably worse if you decide to spare him. He ends up living on the streets, destitute and tortured by others, even begging you to kill him. Technically then, you're kind of being the hero, ending his wretched life as soon as you can, so yeah, don't hold back. It's just a shame that you can't quite make it as slow and as painful as possible.